guys welcome back to my channel today i am going to explain about site directed mutagenesis but before that don't forget to like comment share subscribe to my channel okay so let's get started site directed mutagenesis is basically a technique used in biomolecular engineering in which a mutation is created at a defined site in dna molecule First of all, I am going to explain about mutations. Mutations, as we all know, are accidental changes in a genomic sequence of DNA when our DNA is being replicated or so on. Mutations can involve large section of DNA becoming duplicated, usually through genetic recombination. Mutations can also be defined as a change in the nucleic acid sequence of an organism's genetic material. Site directed mutagenesis, on the other hand, is a change in the nucleic acid sequence of an organism at a specific predetermined, predetermined location. Okay, so what are the types of mutations? Germline mutation, which occur in gamete, gametes, chromosomal alterations that occur in chromosome structure. Point mutation in which a single nucleotide changes and frame shift mutations in which additions or deletions of the nucleotide that cause a shift in the reading frame. Okay, so now I am going to explain about site directed mutagenesis. It is very powerful tool or technique to probe structural or functional roles of protein residues. Site directed mutagenesis, as I have already told you, is a change in the nucleic acid sequence at a predetermined site. A synthetic oligonucleotide is made complementary to the area of the gene of interest, but it has a desired nucleotide change in it. And site directed mutagenesis can be done using M13, plasmid DNA, PCR, random primers, degenerate primers, nucleotide analogs, DNA shuffling. So, what is the mechanism of site-directed metagenesis? In step 1, we see a gene in plasmid with target site mutation. Okay. Then, we denature the plasmid and anneal the oligonucleotide, desired oligonucleotide. Okay. Non-strand displacing action of PFU turbo polymerase, we extend and incorporate the mutagenic primers resulting in Nicked circular strands. Okay. Then we digest the methylated non mutated parental DNA template with DPN1 and transform the circular nicked double stranded DNA into super competent cells. And after transformation, the super competent cells repair the nicks in the mutated plasma. Next is single primer method. These are all the methods by which site mut directed mutagenesis can be done. So first is single primer method. In this technique of oligonucleotide directed mutagenesis, the primer is chemically synthesized oligonucleotide. It is complementary to a position of a gene around the site to be mutated, but it contains mismatch or the base to be mutated. Starting material is a single stranded DNA carried in an M13 phage vector. On mixing this DNA with primer, this oligonucleotide hybridizes with the complementary sequences except at the point of mismatched nucleotide. Hybridization is possible by mixing at low temperature with excess of primer and in the presence of high salt concentration. Then we add 4-deoxyribonucleoside triphosphates and DNA polymerase. After adding of D4-deoxyribonucleoside triphosphates and DNA polymerase, replication occurs. The oligonucleotide primer is then extended to form a complementary strand of the DNA. The ends of the newly synthesized DNA are then sealed by the enzyme DNA ligase. Then, the double-stranded DNA containing the mismatched introduced by nucleotide into E. coli transformation. Like, first we put it into E. coli, then it, uh, it is being transformed, okay? Then, the infected E. coli cells produce M13 virus particles containing either the original wild type sequence or the mutant sequence. That depends. It is expected that half of the Farge M13 particles should carry wild type sequence while the other half mutant sequence. 
because since the DNA replicates semi-conservatively. The double-stranded DNA of M13 are isolated. Oligonucleotide directed mutagenesis by using plasmid DNA is also in wide use. Okay, so when we perform site directed mutagenesis by single primer method, there are usually some variations uh, in use in the oligonucleotide directed mutagenesis. So this picture explains all of that. Like in first A, this is the target DNA and the second is mutant oligonucleotide with three base mismatch. In second picture, you can see the target DNA and the sequence to be inserted. And in the third picture, sequence to be deleted mutant oligonucleotide. So these are all the variations in oligonucleotide directed mutagenesis. We all can do these three things in oligonucleotide directed mutagenesis. Okay, so next is cassette mutagenesis. It is the second step of uh, site directed mutagenesis. So in cassette mutagenesis, a synthetic double stranded oligonucleotide containing the requisite desired mutant sequence is used. Like in first one we were using primer, in this one we are using a double stranded oligonucleotide. Okay. Cassette mutagenesis is possible if the fragment of the gene to be mutated lies between two restriction enzyme cleavage sites. This intervening sequence can be cut and replaced with uh, by the synthetic oligonucleotide. Then the plasmid DNA is cut with restriction enzymes such as EGORI and HIN2. This is the picture showing cassette mutagenesis. In which you can see like this is the plasmid DNA and restriction enzymes are cutting the plasmid DNA. Fragment is cleaved. Then oligonucleotides is ligated. Uh, you can see this muted, uh, mutant DNA sequence is ligated and... Uh, yeah, then transformation occurs through E. coli. So, this was cassette mutagenesis. Then next is PCR-based mutagenesis. This is the third and last step of site-directed mutagenesis, uh, method of site-directed mutagenesis. So, in PCR-based mutagenesis, this technique is commonly employed nowadays. Okay, so what do we do in this technique? First, the target DNA is cloned onto a plasmid vector and distributed in two reaction tubes. And to each tube, we add the primers synthesized by PCR only. To each tube, we add primers. One primer A in tube 1 and C in tube 2, as you can see in the picture, is complementary to a region in one strand of the closed clone gene except for one nucleotide mismatch, the one targeted for a change. And the other primer, B in tube 1 and D in tube 2, is fully complementary of a sequence in the other strand within or adjacent to the clone gene. Then the placement of primers for hybridization in each tube is done in opposite direction. The PCR technique is carried out for amplification of the DNA molecule. Then the products are mixed and the DNA molecules undergo denaturation and renaturation. A strand from one reaction tube that is strand A hybridizes with its complementary strand from other reaction tube that is strand C applications. Site directed mutagenesis is used to generate mutations that may produce rationally designed protein that has improved or special properties. So now it is uh, also used in investigative tools and it has also commercial application. Okay. Conclusion. Now any amino acid in a protein can be selectively replaced with another naturally occurring amino acid. The replacements are made at the genetic level by modifying the codon to incorporate the new amino acid. Characterizing the mutant enzyme that is obtained will provide information on the role of amino acid that has been replaced. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any doubts, please let me know below in the comment section. And if you guys want any topic of your choice for me to explain, please let me know below in the comment section. And don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe to my channel. Thank you.